Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk oh, about no. some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, anything else that catches our mind's eye, or eye minds, I don't know, something like that, I promise, <laughs> yeah. but stick around. That's Jill, I'm Vin, and I just had a thought. Okay. So yeah, Vin. We both have a couple of monitors, right? Oh, oh PC, yeah. Right? <laughs> we, have more, we live more than that single PC lifestyle, uh, PC, Absolutely. but monitor display. And um, even though we have large monitors, you know, different sizes and all that, I lose the cursor sometimes, especially when I'm in here. Cause, oh, you know, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm flailing. You know, what, what you're doing is like looking for that visual cue. And I'm, I have a trackball, so I'm just like spinning it. Like, you know, it's a ski ball or something. <laughs> yeah. Waiting for that cursor to show up somewhere. What I was curious about, I want to ask the audience, and maybe you can write in and let us know. Is because I'm I'm too proud to have like a big cursor. Oh, like I do. Ninety nine percent of the time, I don't need that. You don't I need can, it. I, I, I can track everything down, but when I have everything lit up to do the show, I'm like, is there an application where I can hold down like a special key and be like, I'm old, just for that second to make the cursor like pop up or blink or strobe or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would be a good idea. Yeah, I don't know. You would think something like that probably exists, but I haven't run across it. Yeah, yeah, that's okay, a good I, question. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I wanted to go like full barfing RGB rainbow mode and like, yeah. like ah, there it is. Hmm. I just keep I just keep my mouse cursor always. It's it's about an inch on my screen, always. Ah, uh, did get on my nerves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see the mouse cursor. 90% yeah. of the time. It's that one it's time I'm like, I need to times. go. Yeah, right. And I got to take yeah. the event, you know, I got to come from this monitor to this monitor to this monitor. Where are you at? So, yeah, mm. there's that. Uh, yeah. You played around with us with Trackmania yesterday. Did you like the maps? Yes, I love them. I Because I love, I love, and I love all the loop de loops. And now that I'm pretty good at loop de loops and wall rides, I'm enjoying the maps because I can get through them now, the harder maps. <laughs> I don't think anybody had any like serious problems with any of them last No. Night, no. Uh-uh. If you don't know, yeah. that's what we do on Tuesdays with a little from fresh maps. Not terribly difficult. We just try to get around them, set some times, and uh, Friday we have a little contest. And uh, it's just an excuse to hang out, really. But, yeah, we do that with Truck Media 2 Stadium. Anybody's welcome to pop in and uh, play with yeah. us. we get our own server. I set that up running Linux and uh, it's up 24 seven so we can go race. And I, I saw Alan pop in right at the end. Yeah. Right. When we were off the air. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's got to get those times in and Rohit pop yeah. in towards the end. So everybody's yes. welcome to come hang out and do that with us. Uh, I do want to give a little PSA to everybody. If mm -hmm. uh, you are into any type of um, hosting or anything like that. And I think we might've talked about it on the show. Cloudflare. Because typically I use Amazon for hosting podcasts and uh, just the video, audio and video stuff that we use for the show. And um, Cloudflare came out and said, hey, we're going to do something like Amazon's, but not as expensive. And we're not going to charge you for egress. So like, mm. oh, that's kind of neat. And it was called R2. It's to compete against S3. But I mean, it still has bucket storage and all that. That is now in public beta. So everybody can go play with it if you want. You too can learn the ins and outs and joys of tangoing with Wrangler, which is their command line utility to deal with all this. It is kludgy right now for my simple needs, but mm. a lot of that's coming on. Also, our website now works again. You might not have noticed, preferably you didn't, but yeah, there were some back end troubles with our host uh, from like Tuesday afternoon until Monday evening when I finally pushed out the podcast for Linux Gamecast. That went out a bit late, and uh, yeah, exciting times, exciting times, Jill, but... Yeah. <laughs> how long has it been, because there was a time, not too long ago, where when you ordered a PC, you had to get a copy of Windows with it. There wasn't an option. Yep. <laughs> Nothing you could do about it. Yeah. And that was a thing. <laughs> Linux was, I mean... You're going to install Linux on it when it showed up, but yeah, you had to pay for that Windows tax. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that was a thing. And mm -hmm. was it, I think I probably started noticing 
Linux as an option, unlike Dells and things like that before, there was always option number two. First one that you would see, and you usually have to dig for it. You might have had to call in and be like, hey, what well, is And you were still paying the Windows tax anyway. We live in this future now where we don't have to deal with that. But yeah, somebody decided, um, hey, <laughs> free DOS. It's still an option. Yeah. A little it, bit of a, what That's so cool that HP, you know, even offered that as an option. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I think the real story here is <laughs> HP still sells uh, laptops. Like, huh. I didn't, I mean, I'm half joking when I say that. But <laughs> what I want to bring up about this is, um, yeah, it's not really free DOS you get with your HP, which is kind of interesting. OS documentation, 97 euros for Windows 11 Home. Jeez. All right. Make, makes sense, right? You can get Linux for free or mm-hmm. free DOS. I, he's going to take it. He's going to install Linux on it anyway. Why not? Why not? Just have to see what DOS is like these days when you boot it. And uh, he picked up an H, what is it? Uh, ZBook 17.8 G8. Mm-hmm. And uh, free DOS option. Turns out, Jill, wasn't free DOS at all. <laughs> not even a little bit. <laughs> yeah, was, lots of Linux in there. <laughs> if we pulled the mask off, it, it was uh, FreeDOS running in a Cumio uh, VM. Yeah. Why? Why would that? Uh, was that, 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 that seems a bit shady. Yeah. Well, I I have some answers possibly for this, and and this is honestly what I think is going on. Um, I have a feeling that this is a, an UEFI issue. Because FreeDOS does act, does not support UEFI, and despite HP computers being able to boot with legacy BIOS enabled, HP probably wanted UEFI enabled for their own internal tech support because all the other operating systems their computers ship with support and boot using UEFI. So honestly, I, I, I think that's the reason why. <laughs> After reading this article and... And he was trying to figure out, well, why would they have this option? Is it is it because FreeDOS does not support NVMe? Well, no, FreeDOS does support NVMe drives, because I've played with that. So that was my uh, possible answer <laughs> to why HP with FreeDOS had it had it boot from Linux. Let's see. Okay, let's watch the uh, <laughs> boot segment. Sorry yeah. for the audio was new. Oh, something happened. Okay, let's start up. Yep, it blinked. Okay, BIOS. All right, boot menu. Let's go into FreeDOS. Oh, no, come on. Uh uh-uh, uh, I'm the person who will hit enter. I, I don't wait that out. Okay, load FreeDOS. All right. What's going on? Oh. I don't even think I would have got that. Yeah. Because <laughs> he does make a note. He's like, yo, it, it, it like does something weird. It blinks for a second. Yeah. Yeah. And this yeah. is so fascinating. <laughs> You're hundred percent right. Uh FreeDOS doesn't support UEFI and like uh crazy new moon devices that we take for granted. These like NVMe doesn't know what to do with any of that. So Yeah. Yeah, the only way you're gonna like and I just like, I wanted to do something like see what it would be like to make like a retro, you know, just something close to the metal with the DOS, but I guess that's an option. I don't understand uh why <laughs> it's has to be an option, but hey. The best free DOS is Linux. There yes, you go. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I wonder, like, how much DOS do I remember? I think the last version of DOS that probably like DOS six point two 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 six point like two two is is most m- most people's last DOS from Windows ninety eight days. Oh man! <laughs> like when I yes. think about that, I'm just <laughs> having like I don't want to say negative because they're, they're interesting times. You know, we didn't. Yeah. We barely had the internet, what passed for it back then. And uh, it was afternoons and weekends of uh, creating boot disk to try to get that one game to mm-hmm. start up. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, weird. Uh, but you learned a lot of stuff like that, you know, just hacking away at your auto exactly. visit, that bad config that says, and like, how mm-hmm. lean can I get this? Yeah. The tradition I carry on today. So. And- you know, a lot of people out there don't even realize that Bill Gates had intended DOS to be the easy way to learn Unix. Mm. And uh, yeah, so that's that's why so many of the commands are very similar. And it's just a small subset of a lot of the commands you can do on Unix and now Linux. But 
that was uh, the reason why he created that OS to compete with the uh, Unix. And, you know, for those of us who grew up in the 80s and 90s, this is, you know, the way uh, we learned command line before Linux was around if you weren't using Unix. But I fortunately had access to both. <laughs> so. Single user and the um, <laughs> slash goes in the wrong direction. The good yes, old days it of does. Dust. Yeah. So, <laughs> Inkscape. Now, I was thinking, I'm kind of interested in this. Jill's going to tell you all about it because I need to quite possibly make a pair of Jordan themed yoga pants. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. And you're going to use Inkscape to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am. Oh, yeah. And I want to say Katana Steel. Yeah. DOS 6.22 was Windows 3.11 DOS. You are exactly right. right? <laughs> mm. Yeah. So I used the later DOS, but um, the one that came with Windows 95 and 98 later. But I always had a dual boot to DOS 6.22. So that's probably why I said that. I remember that. Okay. So, yeah. So Ven wants to make, <laughs> make some pants for our store. <laughs> LGC pants. <laughs> So he's going to use Inkscape 1.2, which just has been released with lots of new features and lots of improvements to the user interface. And one of my favorite things is that the color palette and the swatches dialog got a major redesign. So when switching the color palette, the switcher shows a colorful preview line for each palette. And you can now have between one and five palette rows on the bottom left of the application can be displayed all at once or scrolled through vertically using the arrow buttons. So it's a lot easier to find and pick colors now in Inkscape. <laughs> That's for sure. And it has a redesigned export dialog with a preview and the ability to select objects, layers, and pages, and even batch export to multiple file formats. Woohoo! Thank you, Inkscape. All the major industry standard graphic apps have batch export. So this is in line with that. And they have a new page tool which allows you to create multiple page Inkscape documents, as well as the ability to import and export multi-page PDF documents. Thank you so much, Inkscape. That's going to come in handy. <laughs> There's so many great updates. Another one is the pen and pencil text and tweak tool now use the last used style by default and will not constantly reset to the, ba the black fill and stroke, which I'm happy with because that always annoyed me. <laughs> I look this. forward to look like my normal thing that I do <laughs> with Inkscape is... I, my mm -hmm. brain rejects everything I learn about it. So hopefully this doesn't mess up. Nothing against Inkscape. It's just not a program I use, but maybe once yeah. every other year when yeah. I design a product or something like that. Yeah. So long as it's still close enough to my Google searches, like, how do you do this thing in Inkscape? Yeah. No, it's I, it's just get, getting easier and easier. And, and the your user interface is getting so much better now. It's really improved. I mean, it's getting closer to the Adobe Illustrators and the Corel Draws of the world. <laughs> He's got to be careful. Don't don't say anything negative about the user interface. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the user interface was always more similar to Corel Draw than it was Adobe Illustrator. So <laughs> that yeah, was a thing. But, you know, the, there, there's people under 50 that want to use it. Yes. <laughs> like Corel so. what? <laughs> oh, Corel Draw's still around. You can still buy that program. Does Corel know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, uh, Corel Draw and Corel uh, Paint were industry standard for years before Adobe came along. And Yeah, uh, but I mean, if you were to do like <laughs> retro design from 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. No, they're still great. Great programs. I actually, you know what, Vin? I still use Corel Draw under Corel Linux. <laughs> I still have one of my old computers with. <laughs> that's genuinely retro. That's a yeah. th almost a thirty-year-old program. Absolutely, but it still works well. And do you know some of the features from it? They have just finally included in Adobe Illustrator. So oh. it's taken Illustrator that long to catch up to Corel Draw. <laughs> I don't think there's, there's probably like six people that kind of know what Corel. If you walk into a graphics house in 2022 and you see a Corel box, just walk out yeah. the door. Don't go in there. You're not doing <laughs> no. anything productive. 
you're trying to relive some nostalgia. I remember Corel shipping with a Red Hat 6.2. Oh, yeah. Um, it came on the second CD. I remember playing mm-hmm. around with it. And uh, it was, yeah. uh, what was it, Corel Word? Is yeah, that- Corel Word Perfect. <laughs> we used to call it Word Defect back in the know, day. Man. It's uh, vector graphics. Uh, most of my mm-hmm. vector graphics knowledge came when I was doing flash design and oh, Macromedia okay. Director. Macromedia, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but hey, if you need to deal with vectors and uh, you need to make t-shirts, you need to make Jordan pants, yeah. Inkscape's the place to do it. Yes. What absolutely. about Krita? What do you got against Krita? Oh, I love I love Krita. Krita is more for drawing, actual drawing, as opposed to creating designs. And shapes, um, it's a different, it different emphasis. Yeah, crit is, crit is for you know painting, drawing, and using your pen and pencil tool in that. You, in that you style. heard that right. Don't you dare try to make a shape instead of crit. Oh well, you can do that too. Nope, not going to allow it. Act- <laughs> it actually does do some vector, but it's it's more for raster. <laughs> I don't like raster. I, I spend most of my time in bitmap, like GIMP. Yeah, you know, speaking of programs been using for 30 years, right? Mm, um, yeah. Yeah, Inkscape's pretty dope. And it's great that it's open source. And it is. You can wonderful. play around with it. And the knowledge base is there, which is kind of the important thing. Yeah, you in know, the anything, community, yeah. The plugins. Yeah, there's, there are, there's, because it is open source, people can, you know, add their own plugins and their own scripts, which is something you can't do with Ill- Illustrator. Right. <laughs> so, Check this out, everyone. Do you like mm-hmm. streaming? Maybe you got one PC for gaming and you got another PC you're not doing much with and you like your gaming PC and play the games just fine. Mm-hmm. But when you go to stream it, things get a little chuggy. So you want to do that dual PC setup. You want to have that dedicated one. A couple of mm-hmm. ways of going about doing that. I've done a video. In fact, if you go to New Tech's website, <laughs> you'll find an entire post written around my guide for setting up NDI for OBS from New Tech. And I've used that just on and off mm-hmm. to play around with it. It allows you to take audio and video from one PC, one PC running OBS, and send it to the other. And it's really efficient, really easy to use. And but it's you know it's proprietary. It's always had issues. And if I'm going to be perfectly honest, the current state of the OBS NDI plugin, it's kind of sketchy right now. People have been looking for an alternative, and just I was one of those. And I'm like, hey, what's the latest and greatest? And somebody pointed me towards this obs teleport obs studio plugin ndi ndi like replacement straightforward no ndi compatibility in any form and look there's a little portal guy oh yeah i know i was wondering about that well i mean it i guess it's because of teleporter <laughs> possibly um yeah yeah the ndi so the big advantage is for me being able to look at this you know you just go and you go into tools teleport you set up a scene on one box on the other and it's going to shoot the audio and video over there you can set up a port number because ndi ndi is like aggressive cancer it will find every single possible way Mm -hmm. to get from one pc to the other pc no matter how many routers and switches you have in between it and there's no way to specify a port number or anything like that because i had to do some just roundabout setups to prevent ndi from because during that setup time when I was using NDI in the studio, I had mm-hmm. two Ethernet cards and one was sending dedicated to NetJack and it went to one switch and the other one was, you know, just regular internet, which went into another switch, went into the router. NDI was like, hey, I can get to this from this end, this, let's combine them. And it, one was one gig and one was 10 gig. So it tried to compensate mm-hmm. and it slowed everything down. This, you can just go straight forward and not have to mess with it. Um Stay tuned. I'm probably going to do a video on this. Play around with it. Try it out. See how it is because it is open source and um, pretty fascinating, especially if you're looking to do a you know two PC setup and you don't want to go out and buy video capture cards. There you go. Nice yeah, and free. Very nice. Yeah. It might even it let you get like away it's... with uh, gaming on a laptop. Oh, yeah. It looks like it's easy to set up, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Under OBS. You going to go on it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't get a chance to try it out, uh-huh. but I have played a little bit with the, the network device interface tools by New Tech, and uh, not to the extent that you have been, of course. <laughs> but I have played with it just to see if I could get it to work under OBS, and I did because of your video. 
it does work gets the job done um <laughs> and it would be nice if new tech would because uh, like with ndi5 there's a bunch of stuff like ndi like i would kill allegedly for the ndi toolkit to be ported to linux like what they have on um windows mm -hmm. very windows centric yeah. company but you know they have options for the virtual cams and setups peer-to-peer -peer communicate a ton of stuff that you just can't get working under linux correctly so i'm yeah i'm gonna poke around with this and see what i can come up with do a little comparison yeah. video see how it stacks Very up cool. against like ndi and like maybe one of my like el cheapo usb capture cards and one of my opposite of el cheapo hdmi capture cards yeah we'll, mm. we'll just poke around See what it is. Cool. I just wanted to share that with every good body in case you were looking. You can test it out and let me know. Now, Jill, we have mm -hmm. people have accused us of being AMD shills because we got all these AMD systems. Aw. <laughs> we love both the red team and the green team and the soon to be blue team. <laughs> I was like, I'm not an AMD shill. I just hate Intel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, so MSI actually just released the AMD AGESA, 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 1.2.0.7 BIOS support for the X370, B350, woohoo, and A320 motherboards. This is awesome news, and actually on LWW, uh, several months ago on, on, LWW318, we talked about the AMD announcement that their Ryzen 5000 CPUs will be supported in 300 series AM4 socket motherboards by updating them to a new AMD AGESA BIOS. And this is just so ha so awesome. And But that could have only happened if motherboard vendors are willing to do this and not require you to buy a new motherboard for the new processor. So MSI is being a good citizen of the community and uh, has risen to the occasion. And instead of requiring you to buy a new MOBO, you can use an existing one. So I was very excited about this announcement. And My big takeaway from this is I'm looking <laughs> at it. And first off, can we all just say long live socket AM4? Yes. That, yes. That's a gift that it just keeps on giving. But here's what I want to know. <laughs> Motherboard manufacturers didn't want to do this. Nobody does. MSI yeah. didn't want to do this. MSI didn't voluntarily do this. Um, I want to know what AMD had to, uh, what kind of cheddar AMD uh, had to. Yeah, what they had to. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, like, you know, this is a bit of work. I, maybe it was like a hostage thing. Like, we're not going to give you future <laughs> updates to whatever until you go back and do all this. Because <laughs> if you've noticed, you know, for the past couple of years, Intel hasn't really had much ability to compete against mm -hmm. the low and mid range stuff from Andy. Yeah. But now they then now they can. And uh and he's like, man, we want to sell this to as many built in, you know, let's make that process real simple. You pull out the chip, you plop in a new one. You don't need this new motherboard that we spent the past couple of years saying you absolutely need this new motherboard. Huh. Uh keeping up that backwards compatibility so yeah. it stays in the system. Right? <laughs> yeah. If this works out, I have a MSI Tomahawk B350 that mm -hmm. is Jackbox that I'm using. Yeah. And it is running the first gen Ryzen 1700. So I was, you know, I've been shopping around for a few months, like looking for one that was a like reasonable deal, like a 3400G, because I wanted to plop mm -hmm. that in and take advantage of the onboard graphics because it's a headless box, but I have to have yeah. a video card at it yeah. in order for it to boot. So I mm -hmm. wanted to pull that out and uh, use it that way. And it, not like seriously, I think about it. I'm like, well, if I see one for like 10 bucks or something like that, just at the time, you know, uh, the dark times came over and the 3400G was like the lowest in CPU that you could still kind of game on. So those things went mm -hmm. through the roof and um, mm -hmm. like, fine, whatever. With this, like, check this out. Check this out. The support. I mean. Look at that. <laughs> The That's I, amazing. I can drop a 5950X in this thing if I wanted to. Yeah. Or uh, the new, brand new 5800X3D. Oh, awesome. That, like, no, none of this. I, I would never do any of this. What I will do, mark my words, is uh, hold me to this, is uh, 
get the, um, what is it, 36? Which one did I look at? Hmm. See, I thought I wrote it in the show notes. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> uh, the 5600G. Oh, okay. Six core, 12, because those are under 200 bucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All no, that that new would tech. be perfect. You got to yeah. flash that new beta BIOS and watch everything just get all squirrely and not work right. And... <laughs> yeah, this is cool. I mean, I actually have a B350 Tomahawk motherboard right behind me. That That's uh, my unicorn <laughs> is sitting on top of. Mm. <laughs> and that's what the, what's in that computer. And uh, I've been wanting to upgrade the processor in that one, but I was just figuring on buying a new motherboard. But now I don't need to. <laughs> Shh. It's nice. Don't let Steve hear you. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's very interesting for me because um jackbox our audio converter format converter the b350 somahawk has not one but two pci holes mm-hmm. which is like huh i didn't even notice it when i bought it i didn't notice it until i was looking around and uh yeah, that's like the format converter, so I can pop that guy in there. So being able to upgrade that and just getting so much more mileage out of it, and especially, yeah. you know, even if you have an A320, you could make some very laughable setups. So, yeah, go out there and tell me how it works before I do it. I don't want to be the yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't want to be the guinea pig. <laughs> yeah, not at all. Probably will be, but hey, yeah. whatever. <laughs> It'll be good. It'll be fun. Uh, good job on you, MSI. I we all know mm-hmm. you didn't. Do it out of the kindness of your heart. So good on AMD or how, who's ever ankle got twisted the right way to make this happen. And now that MSI's done it, you're going to have to see like gigabyte and the like. They got yeah. they got to do it too now, hey, yeah. Right? Because <laughs> also, <laughs> if you've been planning on buying a uh, AMD motherboard, and you thought if you can find a, I, I can promise you a Beef 350s. Not a bad board if you can find one used. So mm-hmm. keep that in mind all right mm-hmm. if you like what we do this mm-hmm. is the shilling part this is where i should play the so happy music and, and, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to support what we do get a couple of bonus things thrown in like access to our discord the live and uncut versions in podcast form early looks did i mention i finished that netjack video i absolutely did that's up for patrons right now that'll probably you did go a great job van on that <laughs> I tried. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it was like Beast Vic or Ogie. I'm like, Ben, the Net Jack video wasn't horrible. I'm like, I tried. Um, well, it's, it was hard to explain Explain in your very complex setup with all the computers. I think you did a gr- really great job with the diagrams. So, good uh, job. <laughs> trying to do like a 45-minute talk about what audio over IP is. See, I couldn't go too deep. Couldn't go too deep. I'll probably have to do a follow up because there, there's mm. layers, man. This is like, yeah, this is like a farpe, um, parfait. Yeah, We're, it's been a <laughs> parfait while. Circle. Parfait circle. Yeah. Well, I was thinking like ogres, <laughs> onions, layers, parfait. Yeah, there we okay. go. Okay. Uh, but pretty interesting uh, way to tie. You know, speaking like NDI doing that over the network, and it's like, let's see what we can get up to when we need to sling about thirty five channels of audio, uncompressed, high quality, in real time. Um, faster than your audio interface on your computer can do. I'll show you how to do that, how it's done, a little, little behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. So you can look at that right now if you want, if you want to become a patron. Uh, if you're Twitch sub, you can pop into our Discord as well and join us for Rocket League. Not Rocket League. We can't do Rocket League anymore. <laughs> here's, Crackmania here's, 2 Stadium or Crackmania ta- Squared. <laughs> let me tell you why I'm thinking about Rocket League because Fall Guys, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And we played Rocket League for so many years. <laughs> Fall the Guys got the same treatment as Rocket League. Epics. Yeah. Epic bought them and Epics. Like, we're going to put them on the Epic score. Epic store. I'm like, why, why <laughs> Epic do you, score. <laughs> why do you want to kill another game, Epic? Rocket League was doing so well. It was so popular. Then people were like, yeah, Rocket League. That's still a game. Who <laughs> knows? Um, that's why I was thinking about that. Grr. But, <laughs> yeah. We got a couple of bonus things if you can do that. Patreon.com forward slash links gamecast. That's the site. We got Amazon wish list, Jill. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I have a lot of stuffed penguins on mine. And Jill I still, is filled still with a... just this nightmare scape of plushies. <laughs> pretty horrifying. Yeah. It's disturbing. <laughs> It'll Aww, keep up small children. My... Aw. Lots of, <laughs> lots of my quen- penguins from all our wonderful patrons are here on display. 
<laughs> right the behind me. <laughs> freakishly um, Lego looking penguin. Yeah, that is cool. That is a collector's item from the 90s. <laughs> Tex Lego. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah, we got a store, store at Um Just head over to LinuxGameCast.com and do the support thing. If that's your thing, if not, tell somebody about it. Tell a cat, tell a dog, possibly a penguin. But <laughs> one of the things we do, if you pick up anything for the studio, you end up on the back wall here, but you can send us yeah. a little note. Woo-hoo. Somebody sent me a little note, Jill. I got a very yeah. ominous message in our Discord. I think. Let's see what Artharon had to say. Like Wednesday <laughs> or Thursday, I get like an at reply in Discord. He's like, hey, did a package ride show up? I'm like, <laughs> mayhaps. And I texted and I'm like, yeah, want to get anything over there? And I wait like 20 minutes later. And he's like, yeah, you got a couple things. I'm like, well, yeah, I got things over there. So it, it was like, what, Saturday afternoon Saturday, driving home? Yeah. I swung by and picked it up, and it was a big box. I always get worried about that. I'm like, man, because I don't keep anything like terribly entertaining. It's all studio stuff. I'm like, this is going to make me work. And the last thing that uh, Arthur and got, I dropped on my foot. And it hurt. So, yeah, it did. <laughs> it, just right it's out of the box. Right I'm there, like, hey, boom, UPS. boom. <laughs> it sucked. Um, yeah. Love you, love you. Uh, hi, Vin, Pedro, and the other one. You get two reads out of this. Here's your newfangled blinky coolatron for the thread boober. I want to tell Frank he owes me money for the calcium morning bills with hate from Arthur. And that's his sweet. Aw, he's so adorable. Aw. <laughs> so I'll hold Wait. this up. This is what showed up. It's currently in thread booper right now. Oh, beautiful. It is the Master Liquid ML360. Uh, but it, it's got a little thing here. It's a full cold plate for a thread rubber TR4. Nice. Which Aww. makes it like the other AIO. Because everyone knows about uh, Lithtech. Was it Lithtech? No, Intermax. Yeah. Lithtech, Intermax, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Those all got gunked up and gooey. And I, I had one of those in the cart when I was building Threadbopra. Because there really wasn't an air cooler at the time. And uh, fortunately, Noctua was like, yo, we just released this. And I'm like, I will gladly take that. But... Why do you go to water? Why do you go to some high quality H2O? You're like, you had that perfectly good Noctua. I did. I've been over it a couple of times. My 3060 didn't have a back plate and it was touching the heat sink. Ah. <laughs> That's not good. Last, no. last time I checked, I'm not 100% on this, but I've, I've read the uh, theory that metal is conductive. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So Overheat. My, yeah. Well, <laughs> sparks. Yeah. Explosions. <laughs> Blown out caps, and um, uh-huh. <laughs> fortunately, my 2060 had a back plate, which it wasn't a problem. I just let them stick together. So, uh, do I have a picture of this thing up? I might. Yeah, I think you did get one early. I did at one point, didn't I? There it is. <laughs> there. There it is. Look at Artharon, what you gave Ven. Uh, the big Arthurin. takeaway from this is it doesn't blink. The fans have no RGBs. Nice. And the AIO good on you cooler master if you don't plug it in it doesn't light up like yay yeah i mean it you can plug the power in and it doesn't light up it's got a separate cable for the blinkatron <laughs> nonsense and uh no rainbow vomit for the win <laughs> none man none. and performance wise it's pretty close it's pretty close to the um noctua tr4 sp3 it's about one to two degrees different but i did want to take this little moment To let, you know, if you're going to get something in AIO with a larger radiator, like 360, keep this in mind. Because I almost didn't. I almost panicked a little bit. First, I did a leak test. I jumped to power supply, plugged it in. I'm like, are you dripping anywhere? That's fine. Whatever. Screwed it in. Get everything in place. Oh, and I used the um, Carbonaut thermal pad. Oh, okay. Put that in. I didn't. I cleaned the paste off. Paste was still good. Knocked it. yet. Pretty decent nice. paste. Uh, it's been like two years that thing's been running. Stuck it on, kind of powered up. I'm like, ah, something is all right. Mm. Grab the hoses, make sure you can feel some water going through it. Get everything booted up. And uh, at idle, it was like 57 degrees. I'm like, that's not good. And uh, right. So yeah. I, I just start a handbrake render and the fans light up. I'm like, I'm like, whoa, what's going on? Then, like, right, right, right. 
let it sit for about 15, 20 minutes, cut it off, cycle it, because it's got to get all the little air pockets out. So yeah. it just wasn't really yes. getting everything flown in. Now, if I'd put it in, I have it at the top of the case. If you'd put it with, uh, you know, intake, probably wouldn't have been a problem. But sitting flat like that, it just took a while to get everything cycled through. Mm-hmm. And it's running um, on about 42, 42 to 45 at oh, idle. Oh, good. Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> it's roughly the same uh, as the Noctua, and you know I have a 1920x, and like that's a 180 watt TDP. Mm-hmm. So it's a warm chip. So thank you again, Art Theron, and uh, I now will not have to worry about the card. I had a piece of nylon shoved in between. I don't have uh, to worry about yeah. that. Instead of worry, I don't have to worry about any of that nonsense. Now I just have to check for leaks every time I cut it on. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Because, yeah, you always worry. <laughs> always worry, man. Always worry. I'm like, hmm. But, uh, hey, it works. So if you're ever in that situation, uh, I can recommend this. And, I mean, it hasn't exploded. It seems reasonably built. And I'm sure I look forward to people telling me that they don't like the orientation or uh, a push-pull or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. I've I, I read some through some very very silly silly fights on the internet about oh, fan boy. orientation. So <laughs> each to their own. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we get out of here, we got a little bit of a slice of pie, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, pie oh. boys, right? Oh yeah, but yeah. we do have a new patron to thank. Oh, we do. Yeah, large mammal. And large think- underscore mammal. Oh, I there's no underscore, the underscore in the show notes. Okay. <laughs> so thank you, large underscore mammal. I wanted to get that clarified because in the credits it's large underscore and I didn't want you to think it was two different people. Yeah. <laughs> because that's that's a possibility. <laughs> um that is dope. Letting us do this the way we want to do it. Mm, that's pretty cool. because uh, we get to talk about this. There. Look. Yay. Cool. <laughs> that is a uh Game Boy cake. Yeah, it sure is. It's a very good Game Boy cake. <laughs> I don't know. It looks like it's got like chiclet keys for the um uh, <laughs> <B&A>. fondant. <laughs> fondant keys. Click, click. All those little tactile clicky ones. That would annoy me. So what are we talking about? We're talking about an easy way to take a raspberry pie and shove it into a Game Boy. But you know what? I think this is a very civilized way to go about it. Uh, this is a drop-in kit for your Raspberry Pi Zeros for your original Woo-hoo. Game Boy DMGs. And this thing's slick. Look at that. Look at it. I like the bigger screen, and you can see it better <laughs> than uh, rather than the Game Boy screen. I can actually see this one. <laughs> it's genuinely a drop-in replacement. You know, yeah. we have two ribbon cables, four cable, well, yeah, four wire, four, six if you want to count the power, uh, three nice. PCBs, just screw it in. Hook it up, and you're good to go. And I think this is, uh, and it's got a 3.2 inch um, SPI LCD in mm-hmm. the place of that. I'm. Oh, there's three images. Give me more. Look at that. Volume was. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot easier to to see than the old uh, Game Boy. Like Ven was me. We're talking about earlier about how you had to get it in just the right light to be able to see it and play. <laughs> Everyone of a certain age, especially on the, it was a very common thing. You know, you had a portable, you're on a road trip or whatever. And, um, having to, they, I don't know where you grew up, but I didn't have a lot of sunlight to deal with. So there was always like leaning against the car door, trying to angle the Game Boy yeah. so you could see it to play. <laughs> so I thought maybe if you wanted to get real vintage, you can just sabotage the backlight on the LCD. But I thought this was very classy. And of course I brought this up in discord before the show and Pedro showed off that, mm-hmm. um, horrendous it's amalgam that he has yeah yeah like this <laughs> mutated thing with like six buttons and a big giant screen but yeah i did go searching throughout the house i couldn't find my game boy Aww. which i have in the case we talked about in the pre-show i looked yeah. at my nintendo corner and, <laughs> yes uh, yeah, i found my nintendo controllers and i found the original nes and there was no game boy and i was like dang i was gonna wave it up because i picked Aww. it up because it was rattling like, oh, like hmm. how much do you want for this? And they gave me a number, and I was like, rattle, rattle. And he's like, we know this doesn't work. I, I got a good number. I'm like, here you go. Oh. I'll take that. And it's nasty too. But yeah, maybe maybe I'll do something like that, possibly. But that would be cool, then. 
Um, I have one in my collection too, even though I didn't really use use the the uh, Game Boy because the screen was just too small for my vision. But mm -hmm. I have one in my collection because it's an important piece of technology, <laughs> and I can do this with it and then see the screen better. <laughs> what I was kind of surprised about was because um, immediately I got it's like, "What does this go for these days?" And I head over to eBay. You can get a Game Boy in like nice shape. How much? How much do you think? Like nice uh, shape, original Game Boy. Uh, really, a uh, hundred dollars, one hundred fifty. Little, uh, about eighty, ninety. So yeah, oh, in okay. the ballpark. Mm -hmm. And you know, I guess if I wanted that nostalgia or whatever, but I wouldn't pay that much for one to gut. You know, find one that's broken. Yeah. And this thing's pretty cheap. It's like what forty bucks. Um, how much is very this? nice. 38 one. it's 38 ah. pounds so yeah and it's purple too look at that being all purple it's beautiful kind of want one. i don't hey. know what i do with it i really <laughs> don't so that's about 47 uh in freedom currency oh yeah maybe go grab it up great price and just go buy a used uh game boy if you don't have one on ebay when that's broken <laughs> Buy one that's broken. Okay, yeah. the, the internet will be very cross with you if you buy one that's working perfectly. Yeah. Got it, right? Yeah. All right, everyone. Uh, running kind of long, but thanks for hanging out with us. If you've been watching us live, listen this, listening this, it's in then to us at the end. And um, also a reminder Nintendo. that we are on uh, Spotify. So if you want to leave us a voicemail or anything like that, you can do that. And also Spotify. Because our web zone was down, I wasn't able to push out Saturday. So if that ever happens, like all of our podcasts, something you might not know behind the thing, I got to push it from the main site. But a lot of like third party things rely on the Apple feed. They just copy mm -hmm. it off that. And um, yeah. like I, I heard radio in places like it. So if I can't get it out, one place you can find it is mm -hmm. the Anchor FM or Spotify because I have to do that separately because I do the video thing. There's your pro tip if you're ever just like jonesing or just check it out on um, Odyssey or YouTube. Mm -hmm. There. I think, Yay. yeah, about everywhere. I'm sure somebody will come back at me with some really obscure underground, like, what about this? Why don't you? Have oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. For awesome. realsies this time. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm. We'll see Bye, you next everyone. week. Bye, everyone. Love you all. And be swick. Yeah, with the Game Boy. Pika, Pikachu! <laughs> Had to do that. Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, I can edit it out. Yeah. Aw. <laughs> thank you to all our wonderful uh, patrons and our Theron, I want to thank our Don advisor. M. 19 month Don resub, M. PT Dave, 27 month resub. And again, thank you, our Theron. And yeah. remember, if anything goes wrong with Red Ripper, from now on, his yeah. fault. His fault. <laughs> Direct your ire towards Gandalf Aww. the Great. Aww. Thanks for coming in, FX Boy and Gamatron and Justin and my Steve husband and my brother Jelly Bean. <laughs> Got lots of great people in here. Katana Steel and Beastwick, Icarus Factor, yay, and Don M. Always. Thank you. Have a great rest of your week, everyone. And that's when we'll see you next. Bye-bye. <laughs>